Hello everybody and welcome back to Byfield Junction and once again we've got another loco here on the workbench for us to, to convert to DCC. And obviously I do do quite a lot of these uh, DCC uh, fitting videos but I think they're very very useful for people uh, especially considering that uh, obviously a lot of people uh, they can it's, it's sometimes hard wearing a loco to DCC it can be quite difficult so I find that doing guides like this it does help people out quite a lot and I do quite and I do enjoy doing them I do enjoy converting locos to DTC and I enjoy uh, just making these videos in general because I think it is very helpful for people uh, so before we get into, the, into this video uh, quick uh, yeah before we get into this video properly I will just mention that if you haven't seen already I am now a uh, 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 doing work for other people so if you uh, so if you want so for example if you want to if you have a loco that you want uh, converting to DCC uh, but you don't want to do it yourself then feel free to contact me I am uh, um, I am now happy to, uh, to convert uh, your models to DCC for you if you want if you want me to I have created a Facebook page if you haven't seen I will leave a link to that Facebook page uh, down in the description of the video down below so feel free to head over to that page if you want to, and feel free to give me a message on there if you would like a loco of yours converting to DCC, or or also if you would like it fitting with sound, or maybe if you just like a loco serviced and uh, maybe just, and just needing a bit of TLC, then I'm happy to do that do that for you as well. Uh, so with that bit out of the way, we'll get into the video now properly. So as we can see, today's subject is a Lima. Class thirty seven. This isn't mine. This is uh, this loco does belong to someone else. So obviously I need to be very careful with it. I don't want to damage it. So um, obviously I wanted to go back to the person in one piece. And it is a Lima class thirty seven. And Lima models. These are very easy models to convert. Probably one of the easiest uh, models to convert. To be honest, Lima locos. They're really easy to do. Very very easy. And obviously they don't take incredibly long to do at all. The decoder that we're going to be fitting, uh, the per the customer has supplied a Hornby decoder for us to fit to this loco, and we're not going to be using an eight pin socket. We're just going to literally take the decoder out. We're going to be chopping the eight pin the eight pin plug off the decoder, and then wiring the relevant the relevant wires into the loco. So firstly, we also need to get the body off, but also we can't really do anything with the body still on. So the body comes off nice and easily. It's just a few clips. And once all of those have been disengaged, fairly easy to do. There we go, the body comes off. We can put the body to one side now because we don't need that to the end. And now we can see what she's like inside. So there's, uh, in in, a lo in uh, Lima Locos, such as this one, so the 37s, the 47s, the 50s, all of those sorts of Locos like that, they all have pretty much the exact same mechanisms. They'll all have these three wires, these three pickup wires coming out from the bogies and going into the motor. So if I actually, if I just uh, flip the loco upside down, the way these uh, models work, if you're not aware, is that the, the wheels that pick up on this model, if on the motor bogey, it's just these two wheels here and here that pick up. Then on the dummy bogey, it's these two wheels here and here. I hope, I hope you can see that, it's these two wheels here. These have the typical wiper star pickups uh, going to them from this side. And then on the other side, from the other rail, it's, well, it should be these three wheels along here, but on this loco, it only seems to be these two here uh, for whatever reason. However, it, pretty sh it should be uh, all three of these wheels. However, for whatever reason, it's just these two wheels on this particular on this particular loco. Uh, why that is, I'm not too sure, but it is only these two wheels. Um, that, does, so that does seem to be fine, though. She doesn't seem to cut out on points, uh, not since I've given her a service anyway. She does seem to be nice and reliable now. So obviously, that, so obviously, it doesn't the loco doesn't have the most pickups ever. But however, it doesn't have um, a low number of pickups. It does seem to be a <coughs> sorry about that. Um, it does seem to run fine with the amount of pickups that it has. Uh, sometimes I do add extra pickups to Lima locos just to try and improve reliability. However, sometimes it's not always necessary, and this loco does seem to be fine with the number with the number of pickups that it has. But if we just turn the loco around quickly, we can just see how she's wired up as a DC loco. So we can see we've got the, all of the relevant wires coming up from the various uh, wheels and everything. So as we can see, we've got on this bogey here, we can see that there's a metal clip that's actually attached uh, to the um, center of the bogey itself. So where the bogey uh, sl uh, slots up through the chassis, and then uh, it's held in place by this metal clip. And as we can see, there's then a wire coming from that clip. If I just lift it up and that comes over and that goes to this side of the motor. And obviously that's for the pickups for one rail. 
And then as we can see, if I just lift this other wire up, we've got the wire coming from the wiper star pickups on this side of the bogey, and they connect along with the uh, pickups that from this side of the motor, from the wheels that come up from here and here. We've then got that, that wire coming up and those two, since those two uh, sets of pickups pick up from the same side, they're then both going to the same side of the motor over this side. Now obviously to convert this loco to DTC, we obviously need to desolder those wires uh, from each side of the motor. I'll do that later once we actually get to, get to converting the model. We've then obviously got this capacitor in um, in the centre of the motor here. As we can see just there, it's a typical sort of, uh, sort of square capacitor that the Lima Locos use. Obviously we're not going to need that because the chip will replace uh, the capacitor in a sense with the, fu with the function that the capacitor does. The chip obviously replaces that. So we will be removing that capacitor. It comes out quite easily if you just bend it and flex it a bit after a few twists and turns. It does just come off nice and easily. So obviously we're going to take that off. And then we're obviously, going to obviously as I said earlier, we're going to desolder the pickup wires from the motor. And the way I like to treat my, the Lima Loco is, is I usually have it uh, treated with the motor being as the front of the Loco. Then I then treat it as this being the left hand side and this being the right hand side. So as this is the left hand side, what I'll be doing is since we've got the pickups on the left row here, which is obviously these two wires here, these two wires here, so this wire here and this wire here coming from the motor, these two wires here will go through the black wire on the decoder, this pickup wire here coming from the dummy bogey here, this wire will go through the red wire on the decoder, and then the grey wire from the decoder will go to this side of the motor and the orange wire from the decoder will go to this side of the motor and that'll be it so that's all we need to do to get her working um, I believe this the customer does want this loco fitting with lights in the future well obviously we don't need to worry about that at the moment uh, because I actually can't do that um, at this moment in time anyway so obviously we just need we just need to hardwire the decoder in just to get the loco to work and that's all that matters at the moment but anyway I think the next thing to do is obviously do what I've just said We'll get the decoder out, uh, we'll take the 8-pin eight the eight pin plug off. Um, actually, if I just get the decoder out for you now, so you can just see how, if, if you're not familiar with the Hornby decoders, uh, just so you can see what they're like. So if we open up the packaging, uh, we've, we've obviously got the instructions there, but we'll put those to one side. And if we grab the decoder out, we'll put the decoder's packaging to one side. Now, all Hornby decoders come in this little anti-static uh, packet, packet to protect it from any static discharge, because obviously you don't want to damage it. And if we just grab a little uh, knife, if I've got my little multi-tool here, get the knife out and then very, very gently, if I actually just make a small incision along here, there we go. And I should be able to open the packet, there we go. And if we gently take the decoder out, there we go. And then if I just stretch out all of the wires, there we go pull out uh, this little uh, foam insert here, that little foam insert there just to help protect the pins and stop them getting bent. And this is, and if you're not familiar with the Hornby decoders, this is what they're like. So obviously we've got the actual chip um, itself at this end, and then at this end, as you can see, we've got an eight pin plug, which obviously you'd usually uh, slot into an uh, into a eight, eight pin uh, DCC ready, a DCC socket in the loco. But since there isn't one in this loco and uh, we're not gonna be fitting one, what we're actually going to be doing is we're just going to be cutting off this 8-pin plug. All of the wires that we don't need, I'll just use some electrical tape just to hold them out of the way and make sure they're not going to catch on anything and cause any short circuits. Then the wires that we do need, I'll obviously strip the ends of those off. Uh, we'll tin them with some solder and then, we'll, and then we'll solder them into the relevant onto the relevant wires and into the relevant places on the loco to get her to, to basically convert her to DCC. Obviously, if you're not familiar with the with uh, eight pin decoders as well, they do come with a stray purple wire, and that's because by default the eight pin uh, DCC system is uh, by default it's for three functions. However, these are four function decoders, so if you wanted to, you could wire up your a fourth function using that purple wire, and then the other wire that you uh, probably most I think I believe you wire up to is the is the blue wire, which is the common uh, plus or common negative. Uh, so. Uh, but obviously we don't need to worry about all that. But anyway, enough rambling on, which I need to stop doing all the time. We'll get the chip fitted and hopefully see, and then we'll see what she's like then. So I'll see you in a second.
Okay, here we are everybody, we are back. The code has been wired in, uh, everything was fairly simple. You know, we, had, we had just had one or two uh, wires that didn't want to go together, to go together very well. Um, but it's been done, everything's been taped down, everything's been insulated, and hopefully, fingers crossed, uh, he says, everything should work fine. Uh, so just to recap, uh, the red wire from the decoder has gone to this uh, gone to uh, this wire here that's uh, connecting to this point on the bogey here. Obviously you probably can't see the connection because it's been uh, uh, hidden underneath, underneath some electrical tape. Uh, no way, it's just here. If you just see the red wire uh, just there, and you can see the heat shrink, heat shrink tubing there, which I've used to insulate the solder joint, and that's connected to this wire here. Then the wire that's coming out from the bogey uh, just here, and the pickup wire over here. As you can see, the connection there, that's been connected to the black wire on the decoder. And then we can see, if I just spin the look around, we can see the gray wire from the decoder going to the left-hand side of the motor, and the orange wire from the decoder going to the right-hand side of the motor. And that's it, that's literally all we need to do. That's literally ev everything you need to do to simply convert a Lima loco to DCC. Uh, again, the Lima 47s and 50s and other similar locos like that, they'll all have pretty much the exact same mechanism as this. Uh, most uh, Lima Locos do use uh, pretty much just the same tooling as this. You know, the Lima HSTs, they use the same tooling as this. However, there's just less pickups, so there's less pickup wires you have to deal with. There's literally one pickup wire coming from each bogey, and you literally just wire those to the relevant uh, wires on the decoder, and then the relevant wires from the decoder going to the motor. Very, very simple. But the next thing to do is to head over to the layout, put the Loco on, onto the track, and see what she's like now. Okay, so here we are. So if we just grab the loco and put her onto the track, it's fairly simple to do. There we go. If I just uh, gently move her forward a bit, there we go. Now she obviously is still going to be the, the default number three. Um, I I have already tested her, by the way. Um, I do like to test them off camera just to make sure that everything's definitely all right. Um, so it'd probably be a bit embarrassing if I don't go to test it on camera and something doesn't work. So I have tested her, and she does seem to be running fine. So if we just give her a bit of a wiggle. There we go. And the other way. There we go, brilliant. For a Hornby decoder, remember this isn't, it's only a Hornby decoder that's in here. Obviously, they aren't the best decoders in the world, but that's probably one of the best performances I've seen from a Hornby decoder in a Lima Loco. Uh, some of my other Lima Loco, well, obviously this isn't mine, but some of the Lima Locos that I own that have had Hornby decoders in them, they've run nowhere near as well as they as uh, the 37 has just run there. They have been a bit more jerky at the lower speeds, but that is really, really good. Let's get up going around the layout a bit and see what she's like. So she's at 50% speed right now, and as you can see, she's running nice and smoothly. No labouring of the motor, not too fast, not too slow, nice and smooth. Obviously a little bit noisy, but again, it is a Lima Loco, and obviously these, these aren't the, the smoothest runners in the world. But overall, brilliant, really, really good. Overall, I think that's been very successful. She's running beautifully, nothing's uh, shorting out, <laughs> everything's worked perfectly. So, obviously, now that she's done, she can go back to her owner, and obviously, they can now enjoy her on DTC and get many years of useful service out of her. Hey guys, thank you for tuning in to check out this video. Feel free to give it a like, be sure to leave a comment and if you haven't already be sure to hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching.